Hello there, it's Mr. Kurt Nielsen, and I'm popping open a drink. It is espresso style hard coffee. It's a malt beverage. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna drink that and paint with you today. <laughs> oh, so stupid. Well, do you have 15 minutes? You have a drink? Let's have some fun. Oh, if you're feeling down as dirt, come on and have some fun with Kurt. We'll paint a bit and horse around. I'll pick your spirits off of the ground. Well, hello. We got 15 minutes. It's cold out, so hold out and do like I do when I drink you. Mm-hmm. All right. Last video I did. Well, got a heavy shadow. Last video I did, I, there was a quite a shadow. Heavy, heavy on there. But last video I did, um, we had a lot of wind. And it made me cold. It made me cold. And I had difficulty drawing. So I put a top on this time. And I feel a heck of a lot better. Woo, that was, they, they look like boobs, don't they? My, let's go for it. Okay, let's talk about sex, shall we? A lot of people in this country are afraid to address it. Why is that? What do you think brought us into the world? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't mean it's sordid. It's just a part of life. But people are afraid to address it in their paintings. You know, they try to have like a sanitized view of the world. Sex doesn't exist. The only thing that they're comfortable is with, you know, men and women in certain roles where they're kind of sexually neutered. That's no fun. You know, ooh, I put boobs on there. Ooh, women have boobs. Oh, boy, you know, what are you going to do? Ah, just deal with it, kids. It's okay. It's okay. You know, you can do things that are sexual and, and not make it offensive. Um, you know, I believe in that. I believe, you know, acknowledge it, respect it. But, you know... Oh, there's there's a horn. No, but sex is a good thing. A lot of a lot of animators in particular are either afraid to address sex or they go crazy with it. You know, like a Ralph Bakshi type. Holy smokes. Now, now he's an extreme. I mean, you look at something like Cool World. Uh, see, this is a dying pen. You look at something like Cool World and Fritz the Cat and all that. Well, that's pretty extreme. That's not my style. I also don't think Ralph Bakshi was a very good filmmaker, to be honest. Um, but you know, you can you can address the subject in a way with, with sensitivity and intelligence and understanding, and um, and no one will be offended by it. You know, it's funny. Like I've done stuff creatively where I think I'm being edgy. I think I'm 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 introducing something that you know people may find offensive, and you know it's a little cheeky, but for some reason. I, I can't offend people. It's just, I, it, it doesn't happen. You know, I, I expect, you know, these results and, and the results never come. <laughs> I just, I don't know what it is. I mean, what do I have to do? Um, but, but then again, it's not my true nature to, uh, to do anything like that, you know, to, to be offensive. So I think when people see it, they think that I'm just being cheeky, you know. And, and cheeky is my way. You can get away with a lot of things if you're cheeky. Um, but I don't truly wish to offend people. Um, you know, I, I like to be cheeky, but, uh, whatever, you know, what, what kind of art do you do? Do you try to outrage people? Is, is that your thing? I mean, and that's fine if it is, but, um, that's not how I work. Um, it will limit your shelf life. Um, it will limit your job options. You know, people will look at your portfolio and be like, oh, I see. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, we can't use you, um, but, uh, you know, uh, good luck. <laughs> I remember um, one time I worked on a show, and it was the first time. Now, remember, I, I come from a background where I worked at, like, Sesame Street, and I worked in a lot of children's educational stuff, and I worked on a show called uh, The Ricky Gervais Show for HBO. Anyway, um, there's a lot of cursing in that show, and I thought, I've never done anything like this before this was this was a little little out of my sphere you know um, but I did it and it was fun I, I kind of 
excuse me, branched out a little bit. Um, it was fun to work on that and just kind of absorb somebody's uh, sensibilities that are different than your own. Um, you know, but I thought as I was doing it, like, oh my God, people are going to look at this, you know, look at my portfolio <laughs> and, or, 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 you know, say that I'm like, oh, you got involved with this. Oh, I don't like that, you know, and, and I thought that would maybe hurt my career a little bit. You know, things that go through your mind because, you know, I don't really do adult stuff. Um, anyway, the, the end result was people like the show. Nobody blamed me for anything, um, whatever, you know. Uh, you know, I, I've witnessed a real change in, uh, in television, well, especially animation. Um, you know, when I started, things were really restrictive. Um, Saturday morning was still around, you know. And Saturday morning was, was so limited. Um, but now with, you know, cable and uh, online shows, I mean, you could pretty much do anything you want. Um, there was a time when, you know, Ren and Stimpy was the most cutting edge thing like that, that had ever been in, in the universe. And now Ren and Stimpy, uh, although it's well crafted, almost seems quaint in a way, you know. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a product of a different time. But we needed that. We needed that to grow um, for sure, you know, to sort of uh, break the shackles of, of um, you know, just the Saturday morning kind of mentality and, and everything. I mean, things got too safe. Um, we had a fil film festival that was going around at the time. I mean, talk about people trying to break the mold a little bit called Spike and Mike. Anybody remember that show? Is it even still around? I, gosh, I'm not, I'm so not involved in animation anymore, but, um, like I used to be, but, um, you know, Spike and Mike, you wanted the most offensive stuff involved in their show. That was, that was their whole thing. You would go there and see the most outrageous stuff. You know, of course it was a lot of sex, a lot of drugs, vomiting, cursing. I mean, all of that stuff. All things you won't see in my portfolio. <laughs> but it does make you question your sensibilities. Because I remember when Spike and Mike would come to CalArts and they would try to uh, get people, you know, hey, make a film for me. I'll, I'll, I'll fund it for you. I'll give you some money. And some people did it. And they're like, well, this isn't really my thing. Um, but I'll do it. But there were others who just said, I don't like what they do. I will never work for them. And uh, th that was me. I just, uh, you know... I saw it, you know, because it was animation and it's outrageous and, uh, you know, sometimes you want to be a completist, see everything out there, even though it's not really your bag. Um, but, uh, you know, you don't have to get involved in it, but it's good to know. It's good to know what's happening out there. I remember at the time when I started at CalArts, um, NWA was out and boy, that was like really groundbreaking stuff at the time. It's still amazing, but I remember like so many people were like offended by that and I remember listening to it the first time, and I just loved it. <laughs> Isn't that funny? NWA, you know? Certainly wasn't catering to Little Curdy, but, oh, great music, timeless. Um, I mean, my God, classic stuff, you know, just like the everything about everything about Straight Outta Compton. I love it. And, and it's funny, like, you wouldn't expect that out of me, would you? Yeah. I also love uh, ACDC's Back in Black album. Love that album. You know, certain things, you know, different annexes of the brain, you know. It's funny how that works out, isn't it? Well, yeah, NWA straight out of Compton. Boy, I, I, isn't it weird? Like, you, you wouldn't expect me to say that. And I'm not saying that just to be funny right now. But um, it just brings back a lot of great memories hearing that album. It just, you know, isn't that weird? You, you ever have things like that? Stuff that people would not expect out of you? Oh, I, I, I mentioned that I like NWA straight out, of, straight out of Compton, and people think, what? No, you're just saying that. You're just trying to be funny. I swear I'm not. I love that album. I love that album. Yeah, funny, funny stuff. No, but that's why it's good to explore, you know, different things. I mean, I, people make fun of me all the time. All my friends, they call me an old man. Well, they've been calling me an old man since I was like, you know, 10. <laughs> well, five, let's face it. Um, because I'm, I'm so, you know, conservative and old fashioned and everything. But at the same time, you know, I'm an artist. I'm going to push boundaries. I'm going to challenge the system. That's what we're here for, isn't it? You know, if you're just going to repeat what's already there. Oh, gosh, how how bad is that? You know, no, we're, we're here to kind of push things and, and push push the envelope a little bit. I mean, sometimes in my shows, 
in my in my art I try to do things that uh, you know kind of make people reflect in a different way um, but as I mentioned before I, I never seem to be as offensive as I think <laughs> I am uh, because people know that that's not what's in my heart you know so anyway it's fun to talk about this stuff you know um, but I do I do um, I do find myself, you know, I, uh, with things like Spotify or Apple Music, you know, I, I, I will go through, you know, people will tell me about different types of music that I would never listen to normally, and and, and I, sometimes I turn it on, and I'm like, you know, that's not bad. <laughs> I kind of like that. Um, but if people try to cram it down my throat too hard, uh, I kind of revolt. And I, I, I have to do it when the time is right. Well, for example, like everybody told me, oh, you got to see Hamilton. Hamilton's the greatest thing in the world. Oh, Hamilton, Hamilton, Hamilton. Well, don't tell me what to like and not to like. I'll, I'll like what I like when I choose to like it. And I still have not watched uh, or listened to Hamilton. Um, I remember, was it Book of, Book of Mormon a couple of years ago was the same thing. Everybody said, oh, you got to do this, you got to do that. Don't, don't do that to me, please. I'll do it when the time is right. I remember when I broke into animation, like the big, the big thing that everybody was talking about was Akira. Akira was a groundbreaking animated film from Japan, and that was uh, just something that, you know, like all the people that I knew were obsessed with, and they would watch it over and over and over again. And uh, you know how many times I've seen Akira? Zero. <laughs> but maybe, maybe I'm at that point right now, now that nobody's telling me to like it, where I can actually sit back and watch it and take it for what it's worth. And I can watch it and say, well, that's nice. It's never been me. That's why it took so long for me to watch it. <laughs> but, you know, if it's good, it's timeless. Well, unless it's, you know, like Von Meter doing The First Family, that's not timeless. You ever, you ever seen or heard of that album? I remember that. I found that in my parents' record collection. And I, list, I put it on, and not one thing in there made me laugh. And people would talk about, you know, the first family. Oh, this is the funniest album ever. And I was like, well, okay. Guess you had to be there. That's a case where you did have to be there. <laughs> as soon as John F. Kennedy uh, died, uh, that was the end of that gimmick, you know. So, anyway... Well, we got about two minutes left here. As always, you will see the finished product of this on Instagram. On the Instagram, you can visit Fun with Kurt and you can see my latest painting. Isn't that exciting? I'm moving really slow again today, just like the last video, because of the cold. It's getting in my hands. I can't help it. But next, next time we visit, maybe I'll be inside. Who knows? Maybe I'll be in a snowbank. Let's, let's see where we take this thing. It's always worth experimenting. It's always good just trying new things. Like when I was in art school, try new things. Drink this. Smell that. Eat this. <laughs> That's why we're alive, isn't it? To explore. To embrace things. And not to be ashamed of who we are and what we are. You know? If you like painting nipples like I'm painting a nipple right now, embrace it. Embrace it. Because nipples are not bad things. Only the people who make them. <laughs> That's the stupidest statement I've ever made in my life. Okay, guys. Well, as soon as the buzzer goes off, so will I. And it's always fun to talk to you and share with you. And hopefully this new video setup is working out for you. Please let me know what you think about it. It's cost me a couple of dollars to do, you know. And when I say a couple of dollars, thank goodness for gift certificates. Because very few dollars had to roll out of my own pockets. So, uh, but if you want to support me, don't forget the, uh, don't forget the Patreon. That's Mr. Kurt Nielsen on the Patreon. Okay. I just, yeah, can't find my blotting cloth. Well, it's a lot of fun, guys. So I will see you on the flip side. That's it. Bye.